Chapter 39 of Just Stories, The Kind That Never Grow Old by Winfred Hurst, S.D.S. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Mama, come quick! It was Saturday afternoon, and Mother was going shopping. Who's Mother? But what does that matter? Is not a mother the dearest, grandest person on earth? Is it not true that there's no one just like a mother? Yes, it is just as true as the beautiful fact that everybody loves Mother most tenderly and would do everything in the world to please her. But I see that you are simply bound to know whose mother I mean. Well, I mean Billy's mother and Rosie's. Billy was three years old and knew how to make the sign of the cross and to say little prayers and to talk about different things. Mother, now you know whose mother, was very good and dear to God and thought that the first words little children ought to say, at least after the words Mama and Papa, were the sweet names of Jesus and Mary. Rosie was only six months old, and, of course, could not say a single word. She was still too small. Mother was going shopping. It was only to the store at the corner, and she would not be away long. And because it was in the afternoon, the two children were taking their nap. So she thought she could slip away even though there was no one else at home. Both the little ones were sound asleep upstairs, you know. Billy in one bedroom and Rosie in Mother's bedroom, just across the hall from Billy's. It was the very best time to leave for a little while, so she put on her coat and hat, took her purse, and quietly opened the door to step out into the street. But just as she was about to close the door, she heard a child's voice cry from upstairs, Mama! Was that Billy's voice? He seemed to be afraid of something. What could be the matter? Quickly she hastened up to Billy's room. There was Billy sleeping soundly. He had not even moved. Dear me, Mother said to herself as she went downstairs, I thought I heard Billy call. Why, it sounded so loud, I don't see how I could be mistaken. Again she was about to step out into the street, when again came the cry from upstairs, Mama, Mama! This time the cry was so full of fear that Mother dropped her purse and rushed up the stairs in fright. Something was happening to her darling boy. But no, Billy was sound, sound asleep. He had not even moved his arms. She could see he was in dreamland, for a happy smile was playing on his lips. He had not uttered that cry of fear and danger. That much was certain. All puzzled, wondering what was the matter, with a strange uneasiness and dread foreboding filling her heart, Mother for the third time stepped out through the door. She had almost closed it when once more came the plaintive, pleading cry of one in great danger. Mama, Mama, come quick! With pale face and rapidly beating heart, Mother hastened up to Billy's room. But Billy was in dreamland still. Softly she closed his bedroom door. Was she dreaming? She would not go shopping now. She was too much worried. Jesus, she whispered as she dipped her fingers into the little holy water font hanging near the door and devoutly made the sign of the cross. Jesus, protect your dear ones. Something is the matter. Then she thought of Rosie, her precious little baby girl six months. Maybe the strange voice had awakened her. She would just peep in and see. Quietly she opened her bedroom door half expecting to see two lovely blue eyes, fresh from sleep, gazing at her wonderingly. But the sight that met her eyes caused her to turn pale and spring forward with a cry on her trembling lips. Her darling girlie was all blue and gasping, already almost smothered by the linens under which she had in some way slipped. Just in time to save her little one's life, Mother knew exactly what to do, and fifteen minutes afterwards she was pressing her baby, all white and pink again, to her bosom. Then she understood who had called her, and there was a song of thanksgiving in her heart as she thought of the goodness of God, who has given to every one of us such a watchful. But I'm not going to tell. You must know that. Who was calling Mother? End of chapter 39